Hello friends, it's me again. Today I need to explain arbitrary arguments. Arbitrary meaning a varying amount of arguments. We don't know how many arguments the user is going to pass in when they invoke a function. To accept a varying amount of arguments, developers tend to use these parameters of args and quargs. Args means arguments. Quargs means keyword arguments. You would want to prefix each of these parameters with the unpacking operator, which is an asterisk. When you invoke a function that has args or quargs as parameters, you will pack all of those arguments into a tuple if it's args or a dictionary if the parameter is quargs. Let's go over an example. I will create a function to add two numbers together. Define add function. There will be two parameters, a comma b. All I'm going to do is return a plus b. I will invoke this function, pass in two arguments because we have two parameters set up, one comma two. Then I'm going to print the result. Big surprise there, my function returned three. All right, well, what if I would like to pass in three parameters this time? Well, I can no longer use this function. The add function takes two positional arguments, but three were given. I could modify this function so that it could accept a varying amount of arguments, any amount. I'm going to replace the parameters with asterisk, then the word args, meaning arguments. So when we use the unpacking operator, What's going to happen now is that with the arguments that we pass into this function, we will pack them all into a tuple. And if you don't believe me, let's test it. I'm going to print the type of args. Then I'm going to remove this print statement for now. My parameter args is a tuple that I could work with. We can use the built-in methods of this tuple, or we could iterate over it. I'm going to iterate over this tuple for every arg in args for every argument in arguments what we'll do is create a variable named total to keep track of the total total plus equals the current arg that we're iterating over then at the end i will return the total let's print the result print add these three numbers together there we are my total is six then we can pass in any amount of arguments Four this time, maybe five, or even one. With my parameter args, you can change this name to something else, like nums, meaning numbers, for every num in nums. Total plus equals num. This would work too. The name of the parameter isn't as important as the unpacking operator. Just by typical naming conventions, people tend to stick with args but the parameter name can vary. Let's try a different example. Let's create a function to display somebody's name. Display name. We will accept a varying amount of arguments. Use the unpacking operator, then follow the unpacking operator with the unique parameter name. For every arg in args, let's print each argument then replace the ending character of my print statement with a space. Now, sometimes people can have a varying number of names in their full name. There can be a first name, middle name, last name, maiden name, a title, etc. So I'm going to pass in just a first name and a last name. SpongeBob SquarePants. If I need to add a middle name, I can do that. SpongeBob Harold SquarePants, or a title, Dr. SpongeBob Harold SquarePants, the third. Yeah, as I was saying, with the unpacking operator, followed by a unique parameter name, you can pack all of these arguments into a tuple, which you can use within this function. Now let's discuss quargs you use two unpacking operators, then typically people follow this with the word quargs, meaning keyword arguments. It allows you to pass multiple keyword arguments, which we discussed in the last topic. I think this would be great for an address. Define print address function. Use double asterisks, 
Then we can add a parameter name, but people usually stick with quargs, meaning keyword arguments. Just as a placeholder, I'm going to type pass. Pass doesn't do anything. I want this program to be able to run. We'll get back to this function momentarily. I'm going to invoke this function, print address, then pass in multiple keyword arguments. With an address, you would typically have a street, a city, state. Depending on what country you live in, you may have more or less of these keyword arguments. I live in the United States. We have a state. Then a zip code. Okay, my street will be... I'm just making something up here. One, two, three, fake street. City will be Detroit. State, Michigan. Zip code, 54321. Just to make this look better, I'm going to place each of these keyword arguments on a new line. For me, that's just more readable. But you do you. When I pass in these keyword arguments, we will pack them into a dictionary. Just to prove it, let's print the type of quarks. Look at that. Class, dictionary. Within this function, you can treat quarks as if it's a dictionary. There's a lot of built-in methods, or we could iterate over the keys, the values, or both. To iterate over the values, let's say for every value in our dictionary quarks, dot values method print every value here's all the values for the keys let's change this for loop to be for every key in quarks dot keys method print every key here are the keys for both you could say for every key comma value in quarks dot items method, print every key. Actually, let me turn this into an F string. Print every key colon value. The items method will return key value pairs. We can pass in a varying amount of keyword arguments. I'm going to add an apartment number. Apartment equals 100. Our keyword argument of apartment was packed into a dictionary along with all these other keyword arguments. So that's kind of nice. We could pass in a varying amount of keyword arguments. Let's cover an exercise. We're going to use both args and quarks together. We will print a shipping label. Define shipping label function. The parameters will be both args comma quarks. Then just for now, I'm going to write pass just so that this program will work for now. We'll fill in the shipping label function momentarily. When we invoke the shipping label function, we will first pass in any positional arguments followed by keyword arguments, and it won't work the other way around. I'll prove that in a little bit. So let's say we have Dr. SpongeBob SquarePants the third then I'll add my keyword arguments. I'm gonna put this on a new line. Street equals one, two, three, fake street. Apartment equals 100. City equals Detroit. State equals Michigan. Zip equals Five, four, three, two, one. When we invoke this function, we have a mix of arbitrary positional arguments and arbitrary keyword arguments. This shipping label function is designed to accept both. You do need args first, followed by quargs. This program will run, but if we have it the other way around, quargs followed by args, it's not going to function properly. You can see that we have a syntax error. With your parameters, make sure that your keyword arguments follow your positional arguments. Let's iterate over the positional arguments first. For every arg in args, let's print each arg. 
then I will change the ending character of my print statement to be a space. Here's the name of the user who we're shipping something to with the shipping label function. I will print a new line. Then we will iterate over all the keyword arguments. For every value in my dictionary quarks dot values method, I will print each value. Then I will change the ending character of my print statement to be a space. All right, it's not looking too bad so far. If you were to remove some keyword arguments or some positional arguments, this should work still, which it does. I'm going to change the format of this address slightly. Let's add our street on one line, then the city, state, and zip code on the next line. Let's get rid of this for loop. To print the street, I'm going to print, use an F string, add a placeholder, quargs.get method, I'm going to get the street key. With this get method, you'll probably need to place them within single quotes, because if you use double quotes, Python gets confused as to where this F string ends. We will use single quotes. Let's test it. All right, we have a street. On the next line, we will print the city, state, and zip. Print F string placeholder quarks dot get within single quotes, the city, I'll add another placeholder, quargs.get state, then quargs.get zip. Let's see what we have. All right, not too bad. What if the user has an apartment keyword? Apartment equals number 100. Well, we should probably add that too. Within this top print statement, I will add another placeholder, invoke the get method of the dictionary. The key we are looking for is apartment. Dr. SpongeBob SquarePants, 23 Fake Street, apartment number 100, Detroit, Michigan, 54321. What if our print statement is set up to display a street and an apartment, but the user doesn't have an apartment? This would display none, and we don't want that. I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll place this print statement within an if statement. What we'll check is if apartment in quarks. If there's an apartment key in quarks, our dictionary, then print this line. Else we will print just the street. The person doesn't have an apartment, we won't print the apartment then. But if they do have an apartment, apartment equals number 100, then we will. 123 Fake Street, apartment number 100. Here's a challenge round. What if a user has a P.O. box? Let's change apartment to P.O. box. The string will be P.O. box number 1001, I suppose. I'll add an else if statement, else if PO box in our dictionary quarks. Let's print the street. I'll copy this line, paste it, followed by a second print statement, quarks.get PO box. There we are. Dr. SpongeBob SquarePants, 123 Fake Street, P.O. Box 1001, Detroit, Michigan 54321. All right, everybody, those are arbitrary arguments. When you invoke a function, you can pass in a varying amount of arguments. Set up your parameter to be args for a varying amount of non-keyword arguments or quargs for a varying amount of keyword arguments. You can set up both in your parameters, which we did for this exercise. And well, everybody, those are arbitrary arguments in Python.